thanks to rampant inflation, socialism, and the poverty it inevitably brings, could soon become irreversibly entrenched in the US, just like in numerous third world countries. Rapidly rising food, housing, medical, and tuition prices are squeezing Americans. Many do not understand the actual cause of their falling living standards. The explosion in the cost of living is a predictable consequence of the Federal Reserve's ongoing currency debasement. Since the 2020 mass hysteria, the Federal Reserve has printed more money than it has for the entire existence of the US. From the founding of the US, it took over 227 years to print its first $6 trillion. But within the past two years, the US government printed over $6 trillion in a matter of months. It's important to put such large numbers into context. A trillion is a massive, almost unfathomable number. The human brain has trouble understanding something so huge. So let me try to put it into perspective. If you earned $1 a second for the whole year, about $31 million per year, it would take you over 31,688 years to make $1 trillion. So that's how enormous a trillion is. When politicians carelessly spend and print money measured in the trillions, you are in dangerous territory. In short, the Fed's actions in the last two years amounted to the biggest monetary explosion that has ever occurred in the US. Initially, the Fed and its apologists in the media assured the American people its actions wouldn't cause severe price increases. But unfortunately, it didn't take long to prove that absurd assertion false. As soon as rising prices became apparent, the mainstream media and Fed claimed that the inflation was only transitory and that there was nothing to be worried about. When the inflation was obviously not transitory, they told us inflation was actually a good thing. Of course, they were dead wrong and knew it. They were gaslighting. The truth is that inflation is out of control and nothing can stop it. Even after the most intense rate hiking cycle in US history, price increases remain persistent. That's not to mention that prices are never going back to the levels they were. We're at a new baseline that only gets adjusted higher. It's like trying to run on a treadmill where the speed only ratchets up. That's why many people struggle to keep their heads above water. They simply cannot keep up with the rising prices. Michael Saylor was correct when he said, the road to serfdom consists of working exponentially harder to earn a currency that is growing exponentially weaker. Even though the media won't tell you, the Fed's currency debasement is the primary reason why most people are feeling the economic pain of inflation today. They know it's becoming harder and harder to maintain their lifestyle, but many don't understand why. They'll blame supply chain problems, Vladimir Putin, and greedy corporations, anything but the Fed is the source of inflation. The media's search for the real cause of inflation is like O.J. Simpson's search for the real killers, only more absurd. The deliberate confusion created around inflation opens the door for opportunistic politicians who promise opposed freebies to ease the pain of inflation. Many, unfortunately, succumb to this siren's call. Perverse as it is, the policies offered to people suffering from inflation create even more inflation. In other words, inflation has a way of perpetuating itself, much like it because people will keep wanting more and more of the very thing that is poisoning them. For example, a Newsweek poll shows 63% of Americans strongly support government stimulus checks to combat inflation. In other words, let's fight the effects of currency debasement by engaging in even more currency debasement. The more inflation reduces living standards, the more people push for misguided government policies like universal basic income, price controls, inflation relief stimulus checks, and a higher minimum wage, which creates a cycle of rising prices. It's only a matter of time before fight for $15, the rallying cry for a $15 minimum wage, becomes fight for $20. Then, it's fight for $50, fight for $100, and so forth. People should really fight to end the Federal Reserve and the fake money they create out of thin air and force everyone else to use. It's the only way to end this insidious cycle that impoverishes everyone except the politically connected insiders closest to the money printing. But, of course, that's not going to happen. 
Instead, the more likely outcome is that the U.S. is headed straight into an inescapable downward spiral of a political inflation cycle that follows a clear pattern and creates a self-perpetuating doom loop. 1. In a fiat currency system, the government will inevitably print an ever-increasing amount of currency to finance itself. 2. This makes prices and living costs rise faster than wages. 3. The average person feels the pain but doesn't understand what's happening. 4. More people support politicians who promise freebies to supposedly relieve the pain inflation causes. 5. In order to pay for the freebies, the government prints more currency. 6. This creates even more inflation, and the cycle repeats. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. At this point, we have to ask ourselves whether the political situation in the US will improve. Unfortunately, the data points to a troubling but inevitable answer. No. The reason is simple. A growing majority of US voters are receiving money from the government. An estimated 47% or so of Americans already receive some form of government benefit. But I don't think that accurately reflects the situation. At least, not when considering all the government employees and those in the nominally private sector who feed off the warfare state. This includes defense and other government contractors who win huge no-bid contracts. People involved in the military-industrial complex live off government slops as much or more than those who collect food stamps and other traditional forms of welfare. Yet they aren't counted in the statistics. Any honest account of who depends on the government needs to include them. When you count everyone who lives off political dollars instead of free market dollars, we're already well north of 50% of the US population. In other words, the US has already crossed the Rubicon. There's no going back. The growing majority of voters who collect net benefits from the government is a built-in constituency to perpetuate policies financed by ever-increasing inflation. That's a big reason why I think currency debasement is inevitable. Unfortunately, most people have no idea how bad things can get when the political inflation cycle spirals out of control, let alone how to prepare. The price of groceries, medical care, tuition, rent, and everything else will only rise. The only question is, how fast will prices rise? It's an established trend in motion that is accelerating and approaching a breaking point. We will likely see incredible volatility in the financial markets that could decimate many ordinary people's life savings and retirement assets. But I'm not just talking about a stock market crash or a currency collapse, it's something much bigger, with the potential to alter the fabric of society forever. It's created an economic situation unlike we've ever seen before, and it's all building up to a severe crisis on multiple fronts. It could all go down soon, and it won't be pretty. It will result in an enormous wealth transfer, from savers, to the parasitical class, politicians, central bankers, and those connected to them. Countless millions throughout history were wiped out financially or worse during periods of profound change, because they failed to see the correct big picture and take appropriate action. Don't be one of them. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.